Welcome. How are you? Tap Haven episode 20. Correct. We're we're one fifth of the way to a hundred. One fifth? We're really gonna do one fifths? Why would you do this? I mean, Eric just, just celebrated his two hundred and seventieth like hour of talking to Von V or something, you know? Two hundred and seventieth hour? Bro. I don't did I I'm just uh, teasing. Hour. I was <laughs> like, what was like, did I did I do this? Do that? I was confused for a second. I was like, I, what? maybe she posted something. I oh, God. See? She, um, <laughs> I joke, but he th- that's how serious. he thinks. He's that's serious. Fair. That's oh fair. Gosh. So how's y'all's week been? Anthony, you want to go? Or I, I can go. Why don't I go? Okay. Um, Week last week was well, last few weeks have been hard. Uh, I've been adapting to a new job. It has not been a smooth adaptation <laughs> to say the least just not my skill set which is okay um but yeah lots of weekend working which i usually don't do uh because it ruins my work life ba- balance and makes me a super sad puppy so uh i think i finished my last weekend of weekend working last week no sorry this last saturday and sunday so i am happy to be caught up and not having to sacrifice my personal peace to get a project across nice yeah that's that's never fun to have to work on the weekend positive we've all been there for sure but positive (laughs) though uh my wife recently moved from the salon that she was working at to home where she's working at home and her lifestyle is dope. She's super happy. Nice. And it's super nice to come home and be like, everything is like super nice looking. I don't know, man. It's I, I feel like people who can work from home, but also um, can keep their spaces like looking nice like not just the professional but also the personal it's always like a it adds a layer of just like imp- awe for me so <laughs> my house is officially like one of those places where your work is your play time i don't know it's it's just cool nice well i mm-hmm. i i guess since we lost the the third musketeer here we'll uh i'll go next let's see so he is the third we're gonna confirm that, right? We're Wait a confirm. second. I'm not. I'm not going on record here. <laughs> okay. I mean, he is one of recorded. the three. <laughs> he's recorded. I'm just checking. Okay. <laughs> uh, y'all figure out which number y'all want and get back to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll do. But um, what about you? Yeah, the last uh, last few weeks have been pretty good. Done. And I guess it's been a while since we've done one of these. It's been. Uh, uh, a lot of getting back into volleyball. We've been doing some volleyball stuff. Had a had a few tournaments. Had a trip, um, and then lots of work and getting ready for judo tournaments later in the year. All right, you're, lots of you're lots of training. Yeah, later in the year we have a bunch of big ones for sure. So I'm excited for that. That'll be fun. We have so much traveling. I was actually supposed to travel and fight this past weekend but we added like three more trips and i was like i just Jeez. can't travel I'm, I'm done traveling are you but, coming back to are you coming over to dallas what are you doing so i am not doing the dallas one this year because we'll be in india at the, at, oh, during that during that weekend actually nice. so the weekend that i would usually be in dallas fighting i'll be flying to um india nice Nice. Nice. But yeah, the the last weekend I was just like, I I do not want to travel. Because sometimes traveling just takes a lot out of you. It's just Mm -hmm. a lot. I was Mm -hmm. like, I don't want to do the five hour drive, five hour drive back. And then we have a bunch of driving this weekend, a bunch of driving the weekend after. So I was like, yeah. You You just had to be the busybody, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm honestly, it, it, it's not even like too much of a busy thing. A lot of them have been like we get somewhere and then we're 
kind of not doing much for most of it. We'll have like a tournament, but then we're just chilling for most of it. It's really just the driving. There's just a lot of driving. Ugh. And so it's one of those cases where I wish I liked flying more so I could just fly places and be there instantly. Like if you had an infinite amount of money, right? <laughs> we buy we buy a, a private plane, we fly it there, and then we rent a car for way sir, too much money. Sir, you have an infinite amount of money. You're not flying anywhere. <laughs> you don't think so? No. What do you what do you what is your mode of travel if you if you have you an infinite amount of money? You don't travel. What either. do you mean? People travel for you. I oh I see. We just what booked the PJ. About? I'm like, Nat, do you wanna come over? I'll fly you out in a PJ tonight exactly. and we'll get you back in a few days. Exactly. I'm waiting. <laughs> By the That's way, fair. for either hey, of you, whenever that happens, I'm in. I'm in for that. <laughs> when we can afford private jet flights at any point in time, you'll be here almost every weekend. <laughs> just, just, you know, I, I'm like, I'm just a regular at the airport. They just, they just yeah. me by. Yeah, the, by well, you won't. No, 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 no. Not when you fly private, you don't go through oh, the airport right. in the same way. Like you line. like drive up to a gate. Punch in a few codes and then walk onto a plane and Are take you, off. Oh, you! Oh, is that how it is? Like you? Yeah, like you get. A there's code no TSA access. That's crazy. Yeah, there's no TSA. Bro. You can bring whatever you want on private planes. Like you. So when you fly private, usually you're going straight to the hangar of the plane. You're getting yes. into the plane like in the hangar, and then you're driving it out of the hangar and waiting for the takeoff, and then you're going. Eric, right? I'm guessing you've had this experience. That's why you know it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been on a private flight and I have been there when many people have gotten on private flights. Confirmed. Eric is a Nepo baby. What? No, 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 no. Just happened to know somebody who's bought his own plane and is spending way too much time on it. And he would fly me to conventions. Mm, sounds right? like something a Nepo baby would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Anthony, you are a, uh, strangely quiet well i actually had no idea if y'all even knew i was here because y'all didn't say anything i I could we could see you we could see you (laughs) just check i was waiting for you to weigh in because i have no idea what's going on because i missed everything because ironically enough riverside crapped the bed my internet never went out i'm watching it constantly so riverside just crashed and now apparently i'm streaming to it in 1934p instead of 1080p like usual yeah very changed nothing (laughs) <laughs> so, so so how has your week been anthony well you know aside from riverside shit in the bed and and the universe showing us that it's not doing well um well it is doing really well for all of the recordings which we have in high def he's lying and because that has it been constantly wonderful. records different sizes for me <laughs> only for you only which is an indicator you. of your problem no nope, so not true not true a lot of people use obs and webcam streaming nothing else has any problems with it so. i'm also using mom, obs which mom, is interesting dad focus i mean <laughs> this guy said i'm the problem mom dad so. focus <laughs> All right. Anyways, good. yeah. No, I mean, uh, I lost my notes, but what'd you do for the week, my guy? Where you at? It's been many what'd weeks. It has why, been. Why many do y'all? Weeks, why do y'all so do, do one week? I don't understand that. I did multiple weeks. My multiple week was the exact same because I've been on a crazy work bender. Mm-hmm. And then Eric, he's been traveling a lot, doing tournaments, and uh, trying to keep up with his life. Apparently, he's been counting hours with his uh, wife and how long they've been together. So that takes up a lot of his time. Which brought us to you. Yeah. And how much and what you are doing, what you've been doing for the past two, three weeks. I can't remember. I do too many things. You do too. Wow. On. OK. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, don't you have something coming in soon that you want to share? Uh, so I went to the Bigfoot Festival. I think did we That's talk about that one last time? What it was. We did. We did. We did. So then this is episode twenty-one. 
I'm talking about your bovine. No, that babies. was that was episode 19 where we talked about that. No, because in episode because that's where we did the 19. I talked about blacksmithing. Oh wait, you you talked about both of those in the same episode. You're right. Indeed. Anyway, some bovine went to bovine the alien festival. To oh god, nice. <laughs> <laughs> How was it at the Alien Festival, Anthony? <laughs> there were people dressed like the Mandalorian. Um, That's there was an alien, one okay. person properly I mean, like alien, like costumed out, and she was like an old lady that had like face paint that made her mouth look like a giant like mouth. Oh, she had a prosthesis and everything. No, it was just good paint. Sorry, there's like a weird noise going on. Oh, uh, like a high pitch noise. But it was neat. There was just there's so many vendors. And I, I think you had to pay like 40 bucks minimum to go listen to people talk about aliens from like 10 to 5. And we did not choose to do that. So you just like okay. walk up and down Main Street looking at a lot of vendors. And it was kind of funny because so many of them were at the Bigfoot Festival. So it's just like <laughs> the same people <laughs> back again that you get to like be like hey back again once again yeah I know you so yeah it was just it was it was less alieny than expected but I have a feeling that if you paid forty bucks to go to the thing that maybe it's like that's where it's at but we weren't about to do that <laughs> yeah it's gonna be yeah that's a, that's a lot. They had like a seventy dollar or eighty dollar VIP package, which would like allow you to oh like party God. with the aliens afterwards. Hmm. Yeah. Now was it was this per like you said it was like forty dollars or something like for that ticket. for the talk? But for is like is, is that ticket for okay? That's for like the whole day. Yeah. For a second, I thought you meant like that was forty dollars a talk. I was like that that yeah. that's outrageous. But yeah, I feel like conventions oftentimes nowadays tend to be um financial a homes. lot of just vendoring mm -hmm. and talks mm -hmm. and i feel like even if you're going for like a specific talk the cost benefit analysis isn't quite there for some conventions or a lot of the ones that i've been to recently at least yeah there. so Oh, two other things. The dogs are learning to talk. I think I talked to you guys about that in V Rising, but not on the podcast. Um, no. There's this system called Fluent Pet that we oh, bought no. into. Um, I think the owner or CEO lady, she's like a PhD who was like, oh, that's cute. Someone taught their dog a trick. And then eventually she saw a video where she was like, wait a second. Because she has like, you know, expert knowledge in the field she's like that dog just like thought and created a sentence that was not like a trained response and so she started improving the the yeah she started improving yeah the this buttons. is the one with the buttons so the buttons are like pretty terrible back like the, the buttons that people used to get they're all like uh -huh. the cheap like the no buttons that got mass manufactured and they have like a downward firing speaker that you can barely hear <laughs> So the dogs <laughs> could use them, but they just weren't great. But now they've made right. like buttons with speakers that point up and they've got an entire system that is the, the more advanced system connected to a central speaker, uh, which is, of course, louder than a tiny button speaker. But also it's Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So they are now able to like have people sign up for the research that's going on at like the university of California where they're just taking in data. They'll, some people will um, get picked to like have a permanent phone, like set up recording the dogs interactions and stuff like that. So they're trying mm -hmm. to like really, you know, properly figure this out. And there's like, it's just very interesting in the way you have to learn to talk to them because they, it definitely can learn how to make sentences and actually communicate. They just like, you know, in certain languages, they'll put a question mark at the beginning. You got to do that with dogs mm -hmm. too. Like you have to say question, 
question. Because yeah. it's harder to do the other thing. And then also you're giving them buttons. And if they are forming a question, that button might not have some sort of, act, you know, you know, the question. What is it called when you raise your voice? Inflection. In, yeah, they won't have the oh, right intonation. Inflection intonation is that what, inflection that's what i wanted to say was intonation or whatever but yeah so it's cool um it's fun when they push the buttons so far it's been mostly accidental but when deku started figuring it out he just started pushing like all of the buttons except for snack he's like oh if i he's like there's a snack button and then he just like pushed all the buttons and i was like dude <laughs> So, <laughs> so like, are they? This so are they really? <laughs> no. So well, it I takes mean, them. I, I, it's a process. It takes them process, like it. Some some dogs. It takes like seventeen weeks, uh, to to get like one button fast. figured out, right? Um, mm-hmm. but all that matters is it's good that they're pushing buttons, and it'll take them time to properly form the association of like, okay, this button means this and stuff like that. And the weird thing is, it's just that like. Apparently, dogs already communicate and talk, just like all, like not all animals, but most mammals communicate, but they use body language and smell and all these other things. So it's just, it's a bit more difficult to try to use language potentially, but they can't. Mm. Um, So it's, so what you're trying to say is that it would actually be far more efficient for us as people to learn to speak dog. Yeah. Then for the dogs to learn how yeah. to speak like, English. Like, I know how my dogs communicate 99% of the time. I know what they want, what they're thinking, what they're saying, mm-hmm. basically. But when I'm, like, sick, and I'm hoping that they don't suddenly have to go to the bathroom really bad outside of the normal, mm-hmm. it's like, instead of listening to them, I'll be like, it's okay. I'm just going to go to bed. And then you wake up at 3 a.m. and a disaster has occurred, you know? Instead of that happening, maybe they'll push the button <laughs> is like the ultimate goal. But also, if you guys come over, you haven't spent however many hours with my dogs. You don't know how they specifically communicate. If they can True. push the buttons to talk to other humans, then that's pretty cool. That would be really cool. I mean, that's like number one, even if they only know four or five different buttons, there are so many useful immediate Mm -hmm. feedback things that you can get like i couldn't tell you how many times we because we watch dogs quite frequently and i couldn't tell you how many times we've been watching a dog and they have their process we have been told their process yeah and then somebody forgets like one key piece or something like that and we now have to go through the gauntlet of trying <laughs> everything that we can think of. Not the like, gauntlet. Well, well, a good example is my dad's dog, right? And my dad is terrible at telling me instructions exactly as he does them, but he does them every day. Mm-hmm. And so his dogs expect a structure. Mm-hmm. And if you do it out of order, if you... Uh, like get something mixed up yeah you you may there have been times where like i gave one thing before then gave food then gave water and they won't stop trying to get me to do something or stop whining and his dog's like never whine unless they want something very particular i'm like oh do you have to go Uh, out do that they keep whining oh are you you so thirsty. Oh, Did you not like this water? Man. I'm like, let me try this. Da, 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 da. Turns out the snack that I gave them before in in a two hours ago, they expect that snack exactly after dinner. So it didn't uh, matter really? that I gave it to them a previously. Snack after dinner? No. Yeah. Well, <laughs> my my dad does the uh the brush teeth snacks. Oh, that makes sense. I see. Yeah. And so they like, they love the brush teeth snacks. Oh yeah, those things. They're are only addicting. supposed to give. Yeah, they're only supposed to give one a day. Or yeah. my dad's like, only give them one a day. And, and if you didn't. were to give it before, uh, like some point in time, and then do something, they expected that to happen before. Yeah. A good example. I think the exact example that I have in my head is like I took my dad's dog out to the restroom and then brought her back in, but I'd already given her the greenie 
but she wanted it after she got in because after dinner restroom come in get greeny and so the fact that i it was like i already gave you one i already gave you this no, thing you didn't get it was like after this yes exactly <laughs> exactly and that's, so that's even just a few painful. things like snack bathroom no yes walk Help a right tongue. like yeah you remind me that uh one of the neatest ones that happened with this uh the dog's name is bunny it's a very popular one uh because oh, that's the one all over instagram all over youtube actually wait that might not have been bunny i don't remember Bunny's if it was bunny or not because exists. sorry with the fluent pet stuff that we got they do like mm -hmm. free um basically 30 people go into a zoom call with a speaker and two other trainers and answer your questions and stuff like that and then we get a whole bunch of other free follow-up ones coming up um so it might have happened there but apparently i think one of the trainer's dogs kept saying ice bone ice or sorry i said it wrong water bone water bone and it took the tr the owner the trainer so long to realize they wanted ice because <laughs> ice to the dog is a water bone. It's a bone. It turns into water. Oh, and so they gave God. the dog a new word for ice and then it was able to easily communicate that. So it's like, it's interesting oh. how creative they get with trying to like tell the person what they want. Yeah, it is really cool. But yeah, speaking of training animals, I'm not going to be training the cows that we are uh, getting soon. We don't know when. Good luck. But yes, guy. Nat alluded no. to us getting cows. I did a lot of work on the farm this past week. Uh, I actually saved myself a ton of work on accident. I thought I made a big mistake when I went to buy um, some new stuff for the posts. And... The, the people that put up these posts before, they put some of them up backwards, which is like ah! really annoying Stupid. because you've got a whole bunch of wire all like tied around the post. And then it's also like deep in the ground. So you'd have to like pull yeah, it out you'd and have then to either cut it or pull it out. Yeah. yeah so I was going to go and do that and put more stuff on the posts. Uh, but the things I bought uh, go on posts backwards. So oh, okay. fantastic. Let's go. I don't have to turn the posts around anymore. <laughs> They can just Let's stay go. backwards. So that was a happy accident that at one point I thought I was like, oh, crap, disaster. Um, the last interesting thing is apparently it is Men's Mental Health Month. From what I understand, I saw like a random oh, thing on the Internet about I've it. Been, I've been fucking up. <laughs> well, it's like mental health awareness or whatever, I guess. <laughs> and that's like, I am aware. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I I learned something because of it the other day. Uh, there's this really good psycho. He's a PhD. I don't know. He does like psychiatry and stuff. His name's Doctor K. He does like gamer health or something like that. Um, oh yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, Doctor K. And so I learned from him the other day. Uh, so why did I think of this? I thought of this because today I've been angry for some reason. I'm like, why am I angry? Even getting on before I started talking. Mm -hmm. I was just angry and like, I'm like, salty. you know, and I even thought about it. Like, why am I angry? And like, I think I know yeah. why maybe, but like, there's just all of this anger. Well, Dr. K was talking about how in our culture, men are taught that the only emotion you are allowed to feel is anger. That is the only way is okay for you to feel. And so your, I, I can't remember how he put it, but basically your emotions will just, it can be something completely oh. different, but it will come out as anger. Mm. You know what I mean? And so, so it, you have to dig and find out where the source of actually, if it actually is, why are you yeah. angry? Yeah. But I think there's a, I think I'm starting to potentially remember some other stuff. So I'm usually pretty good. At, <laughs> the list is just fogging back in. What? Your list is just slowly like revealing itself, like the freaking like, like the Marauders rep map. <laughs> just oh like, God, Anthony, what is happening? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Recollect your one thing, and then we got to go ahead and drink some shit. <laughs> oh, the um, I think he was sharing that like the only way for you to process things is sometimes like. 
are there always or sometimes outwardly? Mm. And so I'm really good at self-diagnosing and understanding where something's coming from. I'm sitting here thinking, I know why I feel this way. Mm -hmm. So it should go away. And then no. it doesn't go away. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. why is it not going away? And it's like, oh, I forgot. You're supposed to like talk about it or write about it or do something, I guess. You have to deal with it. You don't man. just you knowing it, it, just understanding yeah. it and thinking about it for some reason doesn't because it's like you're only logicking it. And when you only logically understand it, the emotional side has not been given a hug, basically. And so that emotional mm -hmm. side needs to get hugged usually by someone else is the best way but i think i've found at least for me at times i've been able to write things down and hug yourself yeah i don't know how that works but yeah writing That's it definitely down how it works man somehow sure. works yeah i like to think of it in the sense that uh anytime that you're fe feeling an emotion and you logic it that's your adult side finding compensation for it and then going on its merry way, not even taking into regard that you are you are two selves. You are yourself now, who is an adult. Yeah. And you are also the child who has gone through whatever trauma and or experiences that you've gone through. That's a good point. That, that, that child has to get some form of, of uh, consideration in all of that. You're, you had those emotions because of that child. You are who you are because of that child. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was just being... I think it's... I was just like, uh -huh. you're fine. That's what happened. That's how you, that's what you scraped your knee. You're good. Move on. And then child's Gosh. like, <laughs> <laughs> your, your adult self can be a dick, man. That's all I'll say it. Eric, you had something to say. Yeah. I was going to say, it's just like, the, it's like the meme of the guy. I can't remember exactly what it is. But it's the guy with the afro and he's holding the gun and there's a guy dead in the chair and he's like holding the gun and he's like, why'd you? It's like adult self, child self. <laughs> yeah. He's like, why'd you do it? Why'd you kill yourself? You know? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just your adult self <gasps> destroying well, your that, mental that, state. On that positive note, what are we, what are we drinking today, Eric? <laughs> so today... We are continuing on the Flaviar journey. We are now at number six out of 24. Got to right. gotta catch up. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're catching up slowly we're but working, surely. We're working on it. And I, I had to look up how to pronounce this one because, and I, I'm just for funsies. Nat, how would you pronounce this whiskey? Okay. Are we supposed to be able to know what it is? Hold on. Your booklet should say it. Right? Oh, the my little booklet. Book. My book book. It's I don't know. I don't think the glass of it. Flaviar. Like, not Flaviar, but the Flaviar. What is okay, it called? Let's see if I can... Christmas thing. Filey, Filey, Filey Bay? Okay, so we have Filey, Filey Bay from Nat. Anthony, how would you pronounce it? Obviously, Filet Bay. <laughs> Filet Bay. <laughs> That's the best one by far. I would. I wish that were the case. No, it's not Filet Bay. <laughs> it is Filey. Is that what Nat said? Filey. That's what I said. Yep, Filey. Oh, dude, I'm just like a professional at like knowing how the English language works. I just. But I really, I I'm with Anthony on this one. I wanted it to be. I wanted filet. It to be Filet Bay. I think we're all on the same boat. Filet Bay for the win. It was just like yeah. one of those. Oh, this is going to sound like a very common word, but be spelled completely different. But yeah. No. Is, this thing is like water. I was hoping for that. It so, yeah, different. just from color. I mean, we're almost looking at a, uh, like, peach. Yeah. A, like, you know, they're the parts of the peach that are more yellowish in nature. That's kind of the tone that we're getting here. That's yeah. one way of putting it, because when I poured it in, it looks like something else. It looks like water. An An Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> the sponsors, <laughs> Anthony. Think of the sponsors. <laughs> Think of the sponsors. It, it, sponsors. it looks kind of like the barley on, Think our, of the money back. on our picture thing. There on you our go. picture book. There you go. And and funnily enough, it it th this thing, according to Flaviar, is sweeter than honey. Saying that it's going to be sweet as molasses. We got 
peaches, we got apricots, we got barley, maple syrup, honeycomb, chocolate, vanilla, and orange peel. Like, this is an insane amount of sweetness. So this, uh, we're going to see. I love all of now, these flavors on paper. It's It smells like a, uh, oh my gosh. I haven't smel- smelt it yet. You haven't smelt it yet? No, 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 no. I won't taint your thoughts, but I I, 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 I know what thoughts. it, I know what it, I, I, I have a specific smell in mind. You know, if you don't smelt it, you're not going to ever get to the next gear level. To, wow. That's true. Wow. Leave it to him to have the puns, man. But, man. Okay, yeah. what, you, what are you smelling, bud? Did Anthony smell it yet? He did. He did. He did. So I am getting a very mead smell, a honey mm. wine mead type of smell from this. Is honey on here? Honeycomb. It, it basically is. smells like a cider. It does. It has, a cider, it has a cider mead. Feel. Now, I don't know if I get the crispness or apple notes as much as I get that honey forward, like the mead style but those two smell so similar that i could 100 percent see like apple being there apple but it smells so sweet apple is uh no here. it's got apricots oranges pears honeycomb that orange that's cutting <laughs> like that citrus cut at the very top of it honestly i want to be sitting at a wonderful Ethiopian restaurant, drinking this and having wonderful meats. Anthony, what was the trick that we had for smelling? Because I like I'm getting a lot of alcohol, and I don't want to get. Oh, you got to go in yet. through the nose, out through the mouth, like a million times. Yeah, you got to keep doing that until. But it can also have to be farther is. away from the the bottle, the glass, and it can also help to have your mouth over the glass not just your nose okay Okay. now now before we try this i am trying currently to get three glasses so there is this guy who's gotten popular on youtube now he is a some uh sommelier some sommelier man i nearly butchered that on the spot oh jesus christ good thing Um, i'm on the podcast (laughs) he is a sommelier and he's been his reviews have kind of been popping off lately on um on YouTube, his name is Andre Houston or Andre mm. Houston Mac. Mm. Uh, very wonderful persona. His videos are very entertaining. He uses this glass that is so interesting because it has a hollow stem and just a nice little Glen Cairn type of top, but you can put it on its side perfectly. So you fill up the stem. Put it on its side and you can roll the glass and it coats the glass Ooh. perfectly in the liquid. Now, the company that has made this has g- discontinued this product, which is blasphemy. This company should <laughs> like unless you sponsor us, of course, in which case you're the best you know, glass company in the world. Happen. But <laughs> but, okay. but I got you. Disky. You're wonderful. Wonderful glass making company. Make this glass so I can buy it from you. Please. And show it off on the podcast. Please. That glass is so cool. And the fact that it's been discontinued is so unfortunate. But I'm going to try to get three. No. So the actual glass is done by Rydell. So it is a Rydell um, hollow stem uh, tasting glass. R-I-E-D-E-L. And it's called the Venom, the V-I-N-U-M tasting glass by Rydell. Now, they are sold out everywhere because this guy showed them off on his YouTube channel. And the glass is so cool because you fill up the hollow stem, turn it on its side and just roll. And it does a light coating of the whole glass so you can smell more of those aromatics. Interesting. Very, very cool. So, Anthony, another trick that I just pulled, and I don't know if you'll be able to do it because, honestly, I did it and it kind of hurt. And it is not to sniff the alcohol, before you ask. Um, I try to smell it as slow as possible. 
and see how that worked. And I actually got the barrel off of the nose hmm. by doing that. Like I sniffed for like a good like 15 seconds. I get more of that apricot. Too with the apricot. But it is it does have like a darker smell when you kind of like try to Honestly, really breathe yeah, slowly. Breathe it in. This is just wine. It <laughs> smells it smells like a, like I said, it smells like a mead or a honey wine for sure. Which is why it would be great at an Ethiopian restaurant with some spicy meat. Some spicy meats. I do like my spicy meats. Are you all ready to try this thing? Yeah, I am. Prost. Yeah. To Prost. men's health. To men's yes. health. I am not doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot the mental part. It's- Simmons mental health. <laughs> Hell, general health too is also good. Sure, but, but that yeah. sounds way more like uh, sexist, you know, like to that's, men's health and fair. fuck everybody else. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Why did he say that? Uh, was he not I just like women? I and saw that this was 46% alcohol, and I totally get that. Yeah, it, it's got a little heat to it comparatively but i still stand by this very mead forward mm-hmm. it tastes like a mead up front with more kick on the back end if you like mead or honey wines and you want something that's a little hotter this is the way to go mm-hmm. it's refreshing in my opinion um very light So you keep saying mead, but I have no honey for it. And I just smelled honey. But I do see, like, that's why when you say mead, I say, like, cider. Because, like, I could see this being an apricot cider. That's fair, too. But I I really get, um, I feel like I'm getting a ton of honey on the nose. And it has that fermented honey mead flavor like i recently had a mead that one of my volleyball friends made and honestly if you proofed that mead up it would be so similar to this right here now the apricot notes i get too so i could 100 percent see this also being close to a um an apricot cider and there are plenty of ciders that use honey as a sweetener in their cider recipes. So I'm going to say something. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. You had to finish. No, no, I was just (coughs) going to continue that thought, but this tastes similar to what I would expect a distilled. Like if you continue to distill a mead or a, apricot cider and turn that into a brandy. That's where I'd be with this. It it has that brandy esque note to it. I have thoughts. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of fruit supposedly on this bill. There's a lot of sweet, supposedly yep. on this bill i'm getting a whole lot of none of that you're getting more of the oak i'm getting this the oak and the yeah pepper. this middle section is very oak forward yeah. like there is definitely a transition for me for sure. the minute i it kind of hits my palate i get everything that i smelled essentially but kind of muted or sour almost like a sour apple type of deal very much so i was and say it's like that fermented that. flavor like fermented fruits i think that's right on the Anthony's right on the front the cider yeah. yeah 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 and that definitely has a cider mead like i could attribute it to all of them i they're they are all very similar For then sure. that middle section oak and pepper a little bit of a little bit of this peppery note with that alcohol heat 
mm-hmm. at the end. Mm-hmm. And so, then it kind of leaves a dry yeah. mouth. It has a dry, mm-hmm. um, almost, uh, almost like you chewed bubble gum for too long, and it has that like slightly sweet flavor, but it's like a little bit bitter and dry. That's the orange peel, probably. Bubble gum you eaten? I'm if you if you if you eat bubble gum for too long, it you it eat some it, terrible it, it, bubble there's gum. There's never been a bitter bubble gum that I've had. I've Have you chewed a, bubble gum for like yes. ten to fifteen? I'm telling you, yes. when you when you chew all of the flavor out of gum, you start to really get that gum oh, syrup type of flavor. Yeah, yeah. Except it gets a little bit bitter and it makes your mouth dry. Oh, that is what I get afterwards. Once you've chewed all of the flavor out of gum, all you're left with is your personality. Anthony. Anthony. <laughs> Anthony. Sorry. That's a good one. Man. Men's Mental Health Month, right? right? Men's Mental Health Month. So that was an example of... He's trying me. That was an example of a thing <laughs> that I learned. Uh, negative, what? positive emotion stuff. Men negative will emotion. not be like, I'm proud of you. I'm so happy you're getting married. You're awesome. They'll say like... Oh man, you're gonna be so whipped. You're so whipped. Like they'll do oh, yeah. negative, oh, yeah. positive. It's like a, there's a phenomenon for it. Negative, positive stuff, mm. right? So like I just like burned ish, kind of not really, Eric. <laughs> but that was me saying, "I love you. I love you." <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, I thought you were gonna take this story in yeah, the sense of so like weird. trying to propagate something for mental health of being good but instead you were like no fuck that mental health stuff i'm a man <laughs> and like did the thing that they tell you not to do <laughs> you're like i just did it that's me look at the example oh my gosh it's just natural okay, uh, it's all natural i know i don't i am not saying that it's just it's just it's funny how you posed it and my brain was like oh he's gonna He's going to say something profound. Okay, no, okay. Okay. And then you're like, <laughs> okay, I do have something positive. Okay. A okay. moment ago, for those of you listeners that are watching, you might have noticed me smell like 15 of these smelling things in a row without taking a break. I have mm-hmm. the type of brain where I ignore my human functions. I forget to do things like eat oh, and, no. and drink and breathe. Apparently I got a little lightheaded. So I like looked at the camera. I was like, whoa. And then I laughed a bit. <laughs> My wife just gave me a mental health mm-hmm. hack. She bought me a Tamagotchi and attached it to my water bottle so that I remember to drink every time it beeps. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's, That's pretty so good. so smart. Right? That is pretty good. <laughs> she got me a, 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 a Harry Potter good. one. <laughs> I love that. You need to do that for other shit. Yeah, I need to put I one on like that. a pizza box. Sure. Or, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh but legitimately the other day uh so the other day nat and eric and i played v rising uh on a new ish server doing some pvp and i ignored so many of my human functions that right after we got off i was like dead like i had like actually dead. i had We're like weird things ghost. going on like my stomach felt weird my head felt weird my chest felt weird oh, no. i was really mm-hmm. tired it was just like complete exhaustion right when i stopped hyper focusing oh, no. i was like what's going on so it's like it's a weird thing but tamagotchi mm. will uh, save me tamagotchi, tamagotchi the saviors of humanity yeah no well tamagotchi better save me from this whiskey let's go ahead and get this started okay um, and that's like okay okay look this mm. let's Mm-mm. talk about how bad this whiskey is not i mean I I'm going to preface it because I think y'all already have a good idea of what you're probably going to rate it for sure. And I, I have a pretty good idea of where I'm going to put this too for my own personal uh, taste. But I want to preface all of that, that regardless of what our rating is, I do think there is a market for this whiskey. You do. Uh, well, I don't know the price yet. I'm going to look it up after I guess. <laughs> okay. But I should say, there is the possibility for a spot for this whiskey, in my opinion, in the market. Because 
I we and we had one recently that kind of fit into this. I do think it was a little bit better in our Flaviar tasting. The last one that we did, the five, the um, it was the Black Button Distilling, the Akashi. Oh, no, 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 no. the the Akashi. It was very light, refreshing. I remember that one. Like that, that one did it much better. Agreed. The we'll Akashi about, is I, a I, better I, I, version I, I, of this. In my opinion, okay. for me, the Akashi does fits the same place in the market, mm-hmm. but does it a little bit better. However, the Akashi's, you know, relatively, mm, I mean, like 40 ish, 45. Relatively so. expensive compared to relatively like some stuff. middle of the road. So I would actually go so far as to say this is kind of like an introductory to that type, except maybe a little bit more approachable for an American palate where it has this cider mead board flavors. I think um, I would preface our ratings with this idea that if you really like ciders, if you really like meads, (laughs) if you really like that sort of flavor palette, it might be worth trying this whiskey, regardless of our ratings, because mm. it's fairly light, fairly refreshing, and it kind of has this low ABV. It's not too strong. It's kind of drinkable. It's not going to mess with you. Yeah, for sure. So with that, Anthony, what would you rate it? So... <laughs> just to add to that because i can't remember if you said it but it is a decent single malt it's not an overpowering single malt um Mm. and it has that little bit of single maltiness on the end which is for me just a bit of a bitterness um almost peaty but Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say it's probably a good summer whiskey. Um, it's definitely not like bad. It's not like pissing me off completely. Only a little bit. I'm only a little <laughs> upset. Um, I give it a three out of ten. Um, I now actually have found the perfect benchmark to compare other whiskeys to. <laughs> is that your five? Is that what you consider your five out of ten? Uh, keep asking questions while I try it again. Hmm. I mean, it, it's either his five or it's his six. This is easily a or five. Four. Okay. So this is a benchmark. It's this is happens to be a single barrel. They also do bonded, which is just as good. The bonded is cheaper than this. This is only like thirty or thirty-two bucks. Yeah. And it's so price wise, flavor wise, it's good. It's got all the markers. They literally have the best yeah. branding. It's it's a good benchmark for what would be a good like middle of the pack. Hey, that's fair. Bourbon. Hmm. Um nice. but of course this isn't a bourbon, this is a whiskey that we're drinking. This is a whiskey. And it's a single it's malt. A whiskey. And it's kind of weak. Oh, I'm sorry, just kidding. Um actually this one's weak too. It's only forty seven point five. But it does have the much more beautiful color. So I guess when I say this one's weak, I'm more so thinking that it's like weak in color. Um, I'm actually really impressed, Nat, that you can smell the barrel. Because like, I can't at all. And I feel like the lighter it is, the less barrel is in it. Mm -hmm. So like, that's crazy that you can smell that. But yeah, I give it a 3 out of 10 and I wouldn't pay more than 24 bucks for it, really? Because it's... I don't know. If you like single malt, you probably like it. If you and like Eric said, all those things. Honestly, so many of the flavor things we run into, it's almost like they are just trying their hardest to make sure that they find one thing you like. So like this is For the sure. one that people that like ciders and meads and stuff would like. Well like there you go. Yeah. And and nothing nothing so far is going to compare to the Star Wars Solera, which was bro, we don't speak its name. Oh man, so good. We don't speak its still name. are still are top rated of the the batch so far, even though we are uh, only a quarter of the way through, and there are tons of whiskeys left. But yeah, with that, 
Yeah. No, wait. So what did you rate? The, you rated this a three. You got what a three. would you pay for it? He said twenty four dollars. Twenty four. Twenty four dollars. Exactly twenty four. Yes. Okay. Nat, what would you rate it? <laughs> so um, I'm quickly realizing I'm not a single malt, malt person. <laughs> if it says, <laughs> like, wait a, now, wait a second. Yeah. Because the Solera is a was, single malt. I know. I know. I think uh, you I, know? I think it takes a special one for me. Like it really does have to be like nice. I f- oh, God, I feel so bougie, but at the same time, I'm like, no, this is like this is what my flavor palette is. Um, this one gave me the feeling that it was trying to be sweet, but did not a at- did not atone didn't balance yeah didn't balance out the flavor palette to take care of the bitterness that comes from a single malt so they came with all these this sweetness and these uh i guess additions to their flavor palette i didn't get any of it like i was like halfway through it and i was like where is the vanilla like where is where's the orange peel like I get honeycomb for sure, I got apricot for sure. Oh but my god! I I don't remember having any form of maple syrup or hazelnut. Where in the jolly green word? <laughs> yeah, the maple syrup it's and the hazelnut. the hazelnut is definitely not it's- that present for me. It, it 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 I think the best way to describe the taste now the smell is different but the taste is if you were to take honeycomb out of honey mm-hmm. let it kind of fully uh, dehydrate mm-hmm. so that it's just the honeycomb and eat that honeycomb. <laughs> That's kind of the flavor that you're looking at, for right? Sure, for Honeycomb sure. has this bitterness to it. Mm-hmm. It has this slight honey note to it, but it, it's only reminiscent of honey, right. right? Right. And if you were to essentially take that honeycomb and some sort of fruit paraphernalia, right, maybe like let it rest near a peach for a few hours, <laughs> then you then you got the flavor. Right? Uh, I didn't catch that's another thing. I didn't catch any peach either. So just in summary, this one didn't speak to me at all. Uh just in general, I like for my spirits to kind of engage me from like from jump. Like I like to be like wowed, if that makes any sense. Like I don't know. I, I like my my whiskey or and or bourbon to be like I'm special. Taste me because all this is really cool. Um, but I didn't get that from this one, unfortunately. And I was really excited because of the flavor, but the um, the tasting bill. But I didn't get any of it. So unfortunately, this is a two for me. Oh wow! Um, and I would pay. 25 bucks for it i mean like it might be inter- it will probably be interesting for people who like mead i don't even like mead that might be another thing as well i don't like meads or ciders i feel like they're kind of they're trying to be the in between of something that i just don't think that there is a bridge between alcohol and super uh confectionery sugar esque drinks I, I never run into it so wait i take offense to that Sir, you could take as you could take whatever you want. I, You're just not I love my back. <laughs> I love ciders and meads because I'm the person that is allergic to hops, so it's my only way to like be at a beer place with my friends and not have to drink water. <laughs> this is so totally hear you. <laughs> I have been to many a cidercade to hang out with friends, and I have. I have bought a cider from Cidercade to sip along with other people at mm-hmm. said Cidercade. Did I enjoy the drink? Absolutely it, not. Well, it sounds like you've drink had it? very... Absolutely. Sir. 
Sorry, everything's <laughs> falling. Like the, this jacket I behind me is that. falling. I was trying to fix it, and then my headset fell off. Everything's. It falling. sounds like you've only had very sweet ciders, which I agree are terrible. I've only yes. ha- I'm not only had sorry I've had very good sliders that are kind of like this, and they are just barely sweet, and they have bitterness and they have fizz, and they are good because it is not like you're drinking apple juice, which is disgusting. I agree. I don't, I don't want apple juice. You need like a dry apple. cider. I think is what they call it. A dry cider is not. Super but sweet. I also want, but I also want to be like, I also want sweet stuff. So like, it's <laughs> that's why bourbon works. It does both. <laughs> bourbon is very special. Okay. Whiskeys in general are very special in True. that regard. That True. they can be both sweet and savory. Mommy, I think I think adding brown sugar to this would have been awesome. Brown sugar. <laughs> yeah, huh. yeah. Uh, like, how would you have added brown sugar? Sprinkle like, it. Would in you there, just huh? take a spoonful and just no, kind of like you you sprinkle know, it like, in on the tasting bill? Like, I would have liked to have added brown sugar to I the see. tasting bill. I think that would have rounded it out for me. Anyway, I'm done rating my stuff. Eric, take it away. What do we got? <laughs> and uh, so, this, in my opinion, if you if you like this sort of whiskey, and you have the money. To kind of actually not even have the money. Um, oh, the Akashi is just an upgrade for this. Yeah. If you if you if you like if you want something light, refreshing, a little fruity, fun, the Akashi is great. I rated it a four. I think it was pretty much a four across or around a four uh, across the board. Um, everybody gave me uh, decimal point ratings last week. So, or the last time we did the episode. So, I mean, they round two of them. So, it's a reasonably good whiskey. Now, this one has some things that, like, I'm interested. I want something. I feel like it's in the middle. And Mm. I want it to pick a side. For sure. I either want it to go and lean more into the single malt. Or I want it to lean more into the flavors and i want it to go a direction and either be more refreshing or more interesting okay and like nat i feel like the flavors kind of fall flat for me especially on the palate the nose of this is really enjoyable it's fruity it's honey it's got all these notes to it that are just light refreshing and summery and then when you actually taste it you get a whiff of that and then it goes away and kind of Mm -hmm. retracts back into this wooden cave you know (laughs) it's like no i don't want to come out you'll have to yeah it's, it's interesting now with all that said i do think there's a market for this and i definitely like anthony said there wasn't anything particularly bad about that. If somebody put a glass of this in front of me, I'm going to finish the glass. It's light, refreshing, easy to drink. Like if somebody was like, "Here you go. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm going to take it and drink it." It's gone. I mean, <sighs> and so with that my rating. Uh-huh. And so for for it's been a while, so just to kind of reassess myself for the rating. Uh oh, one is I have tried it and I'm not drinking it. I'm not mm. finishing that glass. Like mm. one is I'm done. Yep. Two is I'm going to finish the glass, but I'm never going to buy this again. For sure. Right? Three is ah, I might buy this. If somebody offers it to me, I'm definitely going to drink it. And with my own rating system, I, this really does fall somewhere between a two and a three for me. Mm. And so with that, I, I think I'd give it a 2.5, right? I'm, if somebody gives me a glass of this, like I'm definitely going to drink it. Would I buy a glass? Maybe not, but like it depends on the price and depends on the situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also not going to go out and search for it and things like that. So this sure. really falls somewhere between two and five. Why did I think that you three. gave it a four earlier? I don't know. Okay, well. 
Oh, I gave the Akashi a four. <sighs> the Akashi. So yeah, 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 I, yeah. I was thinking that like personally, I think it's a three out of ten. But objectively, I think it's like a four out of ten. Does that make sense? Like for my personal taste, it's a three out of ten. I see. But like objectively, I'm like, there's a lot of good smells on it. It does a good gentle single malt. I think this could be good for some people. So like four. I could see that. But like for yeah, me, yeah. definitely I think a three. For the general market, yeah, I would up my rating too. That two point five is for me, right? I want to make that clear. Like Anthony said, for the general market, there is a market for this. That's why I kind of prefaced our ratings. This whiskey doesn't really speak to any of our flavor packs. It's too weak. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> it is <laughs> not strong. We have too much <laughs> muscle mass for this drink. <laughs> we not but skinny yeah, boys. Falls into... <laughs> you know, thick boys. But yeah, it falls into an interesting place. Now, I I think 20 Five ish dollars is kind of unreasonable for that type of deal, but I really would love to see this right around the 32 mark to 35 mark, which I think is reasonable in the market for people that would be buying this. And I think it makes it a competitor for something like the Akashi, which is right around that 35 to 40 dollar mark, if I remember correctly. And so I really think it needs to be under that. Um, and with that said, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to look up the price of the, uh, oh. and you know, for, for 65 to $70, I don't know if I'm going to put this on my 65? list. Five. So this is 60 euros at MSRP. Wow. Wow. Not for yeah. 60 Not for, for 60, 60 euros. Dude. I don't know. Here's the thing. If you like this style of whiskey, want something light, refreshing, approachable, the Akashi is what? Let me just double check the price so I'm not spouting BS. I can get the a curbside pickup of Akashi for 40 bucks from my nearby total uh total wine. For $40, the Akashi is going to solve all the issues and be better, in my opinion, no. and do the same job it, as this whiskey. This just reminds me no. of when we were at Eric's wedding and my dad was in the, uh, what do you call it? The place that we all got ready? It's the dude oh, area. Oh, yeah. What do you call it? There is a, a name for, for it. It's the place the where the bachelor gets yeah, ready. But whatever. So like he was sitting there and we were sharing some of the stuff with him. And then he just went on a rant talking to, I think, Mark about how like there's so many freaking whiskeys that are coming out now and they're all overpriced and it's all just stupid. And it's like and I agree because I'm literally drinking a $30 single barrel that is really good. And they uh, want $65 for this? Yeah. Why? That's, that's, that's hard. What are you doing? I will pass. I will pass. At, at $65. Nice. Just to put it out there, you can get so much stuff on the market. I stuff. guarantee you, for under $65, you can find one of your favorite whiskeys. One of your top 15 top 20 whiskeys regardless can be on your list for under $65. And so this whiskey is trying to compete with one of your favorite whiskeys, regardless of your palate. No. no. And it doesn't have that much to offer. Would I take this or a Sagamore? Would you take this over a new riff? New riff was 65 easy. I 80 maybe never. Take right? this over. <laughs> Would How I take this dare. over any of the red breast line? No, probably no, not. Probably not. Would I take this over an Eagle Rare that I can get for 42 that's a 10 year bourbon that's amazing? No. I'm confused how they came up with the. I mean, maybe if it's a scotch. Costs. No, uh, euros. He said 60 euros. That's $65. Yeah, 60 USD. euros. So this is a. Uh, uh, it's just a single malt. So it's done in um, uh, Filey Bay, 
which uh, is it Filey Bay? I know the Spirit Yorkshire Spirit of Yorkshire Distillery is the one who does this mm -hmm. whiskey. Um, they it is an award winning whiskey, although not this particular flagship uh, model. Okay, they do. They're running out of Filey Bay, which is. Let me just look at where where this Yorkshire is. I have a not from there's a lot Europe, but it is in Yorkshire, 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 whichever Yorkshire. is pronounced. Yeah, so sure, this is out of sure. England, Yorkshire. Sure it is. So the, it's in the United <laughs> Kingdom on the East Coast, right? Uh -huh. And yeah, so they they have some import costs probably, but again, this is from their website. Sixty euros is their MSRP. So even if you go to their distillery, you're paying sixty euros. It's the same price. Oh. That 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 literally converts to sixty five bucks. I'm yeah. sorry, it's gonna be a no. That's gonna be a hard no. Sorry, to be there are forty. There's forty cents of import. Up, like I have, up, to, I have to assume, Jesus, I would have to assume that this is like hype for something else that's bled over into its other products, because I can't see this competing with anything in that range. Not at that even, price range. Yeah. If, if, even if you like the flavor palette, like there's nothing. Wait, what in the world? Sorry, I just looked up like cost of scotch, which did nothing. But there's this <laughs> there's this McCallan twelve year double cask for sixty dollars. <laughs> so I'm like a twelve year thing double cask for sixty bucks. Hey, that so I will say the 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 McCallan twelve year is meh. Oh, is it okay. at best? Uh, However, uh, so when I drink McCallans, I like to do if I'm gonna go buy myself a McCallan, somebody's not gifting me a McCallan. Now, if you okay. want to give me a McCallan, I mean, you're giving me a McCallan. Know, but the um, the McCallan has a 15 year uh, double cask, um, which I can oftentimes find for a hundred or less generally um that is mwah, beautiful wonderful scotch scotch for the, scotch. For the price it's great now of course typically i don't do mccallan what i usually like to do and i actually want to do this on the podcast at some point is i love the ardbeg line and the ardbeg oogdal is a great scotch. Flaviar does do it for their specialty. I am going to talk to the guys at some point and see if we'll put in the extra bit of money to get that as a delivery bottle for us. The Ardbeg Oogdal is an interesting experience. Um, it is a well, it is a scotch scotch, it's so it's heavily peaty, peated. Boy. Yeah, it's very peated, mm. but. I like to let it breathe for a little bit. So I usually open my Ardbeg doll and let it breathe. And then I, I wait. I just sit on it for like three months. Man, it's great. Okay. Letting it breathe for like three months is good. You it, just it's leave like the bottle so open for three months. What? No, 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 no. I, I leave it closed, but I like pour myself Very a confused. goose neck pour and then I let it sit for a little bit. Okay. But. It is it is actually really good. Um Ardbeg is known for their really good scotches and they're a wonderful company. Same with like Lefroig. If you Lefroig. like heavily peated stuff, yeah. Lefroig is really good. Um I, But yeah, at at sixty dollars, I just could not Nope. I'm not I'm never gonna pay sixty dollars for this bottle. Never. And if if I'm in a restaurant I'm not paying a sixty dollar upcharge, a pour for this no. either. With a little bit of upcharge for being in a restaurant, I'm just mm -mm. not. Mm -mm. It's just not going to happen. Mm -mm. Ugh. So, all that to say, cool experience. Uh, listener, watcher, wherever you are, you can find something better. Agreed. You can find something better, um, unless. Y'all sponsor us at Tap Haven. So, wow. <laughs> because if you do, best whiskey out. No, I'm just kidding. 
No, no, no. I refuse to budge on whiskeys. Eric is a shill. No, 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 no. I'm a shill for everything else, but not for whiskeys. Whiskey companies, you can't buy me. Bourbon, though. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk shop. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk shop. With that. Welcome to Nat the Tap Anthony. Haven Podcast, where we occasionally talk about video games. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Nat, what have you been playing? I, I have a feeling we've all been playing the same thing. I've been very much looking forward fair? to this. Have you played anything but what we've been playing, Nat? Yeah, yeah, that's how we should do it. That's a Has good idea. Has anyone been playing any game except for what we've been playing? Because I am very much ready to talk about what we've been playing. Okay. That's... That's, that's that's fair. So I want y'all to go ahead <laughs> and rattle your brains to say, uh, did you play anything else? I I loaded Hades too, but like, oh. I just I couldn't I couldn't reason why I was a I would be able to play Hades too, and then also not be able to get my work done. So like, it loaded and then I closed it and went back to work. So. In a sad way, I played Hades too. <laughs> well, hey, at least the game's thing not is, out yet. Hades, Hades yeah. two is just going to keep getting better. It's true. That's the thing. It's true. And I'm also uh, I'm <laughs> interested in playing Raven's Watch. It looks fun. Um, they recently came out with an expansion. Uh, things like uh, Ascent to um, Avalon or something like that. But um. I've been excited to play that game for like a while and I just haven't been able to get up no. the effort to do it. So hoping to do that at some point in time soon. We'll see. But I've been playing every, everything that you guys have been playing for the past. No, no, wait, 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 before we do it. that, I'm not gonna before say we do that, before we do that, else. Okay. Anthony, have you been playing anything? Anthony, have you been trade? Have you been betraying us? I, Installed a game, opened oh. it, and then oh. couldn't get past the stupidness. Uh, <laughs> okay, what what game was this? We got to talk about the stupidness, though. Oh, we know I, what it is. Uh, what do you think it is? Uh, what is it? Um, I know what you're going to say. It's the game that Eric told us before, isn't it? No Rest for the Wicked? No, no, no. Um, okay. I am interested in that game, but I... Other the other game is just more compelling because it's finished, and okay. that's fair. No rest for the wicked. I, I, I think love would be no fun rest for the wicked co op. Um, agreed. I that's what I'm waiting so, for. I I'm like I want to do it co op with it. Yeah. No rest for the wicked is still, uh, in my opinion, uh, the top of my one of the top of my list for the years. Um. And I'm excited. I'm hoping it comes out in a different year than Hades 2, so I don't have to judge them together on the 1.0 release. Yeah. But there are so many things that I see in No Rest for the Wicked that I'm like, man, I just want this to cook a little bit longer, or I want the co-op to be there. him cook. But yeah, so uh, I usually have, I think, pirate software on nowadays while I'm working in the background. And so the other day, he influenced me to try out... A Niantic game that is for Niantic. Monster Hunter. I don't remember uh -huh. what it's called. It's like Monster Hunter Now or something like that. Oh, um, God. Yeah, Monster Hunter Now. Mm -hmm. So very tiny icon right there. Um, I just like it was a whole wall of text of the same crap they always say. And I was just like, I just finished Hello. eating dinner and I was like, I. I'm not even going to get through that. Whatever. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> screw this. You tossed your phone and got online. <laughs> yeah, it was just dumb. I mean, I did like, they had the thing where you're like, oh, kill these guys. And you're like, tap, 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 he's dead. Tap, 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 he's dead. And I was like, this is boring. Okay. Ooh. So it was, I because it was Monster Hunter, I was like, maybe this will be cool, but no. Nah, man. Um, but yeah, I think that was about it. And so since I have a feeling that we're going to talk about the other game until like Nat tells us to shut up. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, before, ah, before, before we future, start talking about this that. is a future thing. Okay, mine is also looking forward to. Mine is also a future thing. So this isn't. I was going to say this. Same. Probably the only way I would play this game is probably if you guys were playing it and wanted me to play. But I think Eric might find this game very neat. And it is called Once Human. Uh -huh. And there's a demo. Sounds familiar. 
There's a demo. There's a demo that is available right now. It is an open world survival game with strange post apocalyptic future where like it's like it's it's wild. Oh, it's out there. It's very I have seen the preview for it's this. like what that it game control? Good. It's like control. It's like control but multiplayer. Yeah, yeah. And cool. interesting and intriguing, so I'm curious about it. Yeah, it looks it looks interesting. But yeah, I, like I don't it. think it's a game I would play by myself. Mm-hmm. Now this is Scary. this is one this style of game especially. I'm gonna wait till it's released for this. <laughs> Same thing as V Rising, I think too. V Rising, every a bunch of people played it before it was released. I played it on initial launch for like 20 hours or so, and V Rising is actually the game that convinced me to not really play that style of game on in early access and to just wait for it to release. What but this does look that, pretty Eric? cool. <laughs> what was the point of that? <laughs> what was the point of that? Eric? Just to say that like I this looks really cool, but I'm probably not gonna I'm probably not gonna pick it up or play it until it does a 1.0 okay i'm just making sure that there was yeah. there was a direction that we were going because we yeah. went we we did this oh yeah you kind really? of didn't say why yeah you didn't say oh, why i see you I wouldn't see. play it you didn't say what v rising shared and showed you well let me l- let me discuss my future first okay. so i don't let me lose it my here. future first monster hunter uh Go files looks dope oh yeah Two weapons, dude. Monster. Two fucking weapons, yeah. and then like also like uh, there's like a lot going on in that in that preview. Yeah. They just yeah. released their, I think they released their flagship monster or a possible monster. I mean, it's if this must have came out over the weekend. Was that on IGN or we? Uh, I, there was two major things this weekend. And I missed like both of them thanks to cows. Was, there was IGN know, and was. there was the PC Gamer Show that Day Nine does. I think it might have been no, PC no, Gaming Show. PC. No, no, no. Was that this weekend? I think the piece... it was, man. I missed it. I don't remember what released uh, the Monster Hunter Wilds trailer, but it was like a while ago. It was like a release like date, twenty twenty five. Yeah, man. Yep, they do have the plan release date. Yeah, but it looks fantastic. I'm very excited. <laughs> I'm ready to bonk some monsters' heads, especially that one who. Okay, so spoilers. Uh, one of the monsters. I don't think it's the flagship because it, it's too small and it's a little too. I don't know. I haven't. We haven't seen enough of it for me to th- say it's the flagship, but it's got like two electrodes that like stick out in front of it and like builds electricity and shoots lightning bolts. I'm. I love lightning style monsters. Uh, Zenogre is like a huge fan favorite for me. I would love to get a Zenogre tattoo. So like, yeah. Any any time that I can get a monster that's just like zap zap, it's great. So stoked. That was my little thing to look forward to. Go ahead, Eric. What do you got? Okay. So I have I have just a few things, and some of them are actually from the PC PC Gamer event. Um uh I'll I'll do the 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 lightning round first. From the PC gaming event, there were a few different releases that I was really excited for. Um Streets of Rogue 2. I love Streets of Rogue 1. It's mm-hmm. like a little RPG type of deal. You build, craft, all this kind of stuff. Really, really cool. I'm super excited for that. The other one on there was Zero Sievert, which is actually a top-down 2D escape from a uh, Tarkov game. Ooh. Um, I hate very it. fun. Tarkov. It's single player, so you kind of just get this low-risk uh, escape from Tarkov top-down shooter type of deal. But it's it's really cool. It's really compelling. If you like that style of top-down shooter uh, type of thing, the last one was Core Keeper, which I believe Anthony talked about on a previous podcast. Core Keeper is actually they did their 1.0 launch no trailer oh, trailer at the PC gaming show. So the 1.0 launch is scheduled for August 27th. And I am super excited for that. It's very soon. Oh. I, I, I hope they're holding a lot back because it's a good game, but they've... So V Rising does a great job with the complexity of crafting, not 
sudden, not ramping up too fast. Core Keeper does not do a good job of that. Suddenly, you go from fun, engaging One. crafting to mm -hmm. billion things just unlocked all at once, and you don't mm -hmm. even know why you would want to use that. You're like, what, what's that even for? What, why? Hmm. Why can I do that? Now, this was weird. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. So, I mean, now I game, haven't played but... Core Keeper at all. Oh, okay. So I don't, I don't know what's different between it and the trailer, like it now in the trailer. Uh, I do know that there's two new classes or or, or something like that, uh, and there are a few different features that they showed off that are supposed to be new, but I don't know. The how. feeling I got was that there is a prerequisite game that you're supposed to play for Core Keeper. And I believe that would be something like Factorio or uh, Satisfactory. I think if you've played a game like that, you already know certain things. And that's that's one of those things that um, I think Pirate Software was talking about the other day where when you are developing a game, it's very easy for you to make the game too hard because you don't realize that you're getting really good at it and it's all easy for you. And a random person that's never played a game like this will be interested and then they'll be like, what the fuck? And that's where like <laughs> early access and play testing and getting feedback is really important. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. There's so many games that do that. Like there's such a culmination of knowledge, especially when you have developers to that live in that genre or arguably most of their lives now, right? Like people that go into developing a game like Stardew Valley or Core Keeper or things like that of that nature, they've been playing that all their lives. And so they have an inherent understanding of some mechanics that they don't think about mm -hmm. as a mechanic that needs to be learned. And that is a difficult thing to kind of break down those barriers in your head and say, wait a second, I only know that because I've been playing these all my life. Yep. You know, this should is... I put something into this an interesting way to learn that mechanic? Dude, this is something that Valve can fix. If Valve just implements a recommended prerequisites system, then the community as a whole can eventually basically create like this is the first game that anybody should ever play right because it'll you, get wheeled you know down to that oh my gosh like you know what does this so well hmm. the ps5 hmm. sony created a game for the ps5 it's called the astros oh, playroom, astros playroom. Astro's playroom is a small mario like game in 3d that the entire design of the game is to teach you about how to play games on the PS5. And it starts from the most basic, simple ideas. And if you can beat Astro's Playroom, you can play a general game on the PS5. And it is actually a really good example of that type of thing that somebody like Valve... And then here's the thing, Valve actually did that for VR. Back in the day, when I first VR. got my VR thing, Steam had a VR, um, yeah, but tutorial type of thing that yeah. was a small game that taught you how to use VR. Yeah. So the weird thing is that like people are put off by games like that. Like surprisingly, Astro's Playroom was so good that I think I hundred percented it. Uh, <laughs> but it's actually a great, great little game. Funnily enough. But like that, that's why I think it's the best. One yeah. But like example, people generally don't want to like do that. And so that's why, you know, when you're reading a book, you're at book three in the series, but they're not labeled book three. So luckily there's systems that'll tell you this is the book you read before that. And this is the book you read before that. That's mm. what I'm suggesting on Steam is that it's a community created and voted upon like you should probably play this play game Software before this games. game. You should probably play this. Yeah, yeah, in order to like enjoy it, which would help developers too, because um, something I think Eric will kind of talk about with V Rising is that some people don't want to deal with the 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 low stuff, like the the working your way up stuff, the simple stuff, mm. the unnecessary stuff, as they'll put it. It's like I just want to get to the 
complex part of the game. I don't care about the simple part or something like that. Um, mm-hmm. And that could help people develop games like that where they don't have to give you the yeah. slow ramp up, basically. Yeah, I do like that as an idea. At, at very minimum, it seems so low effort to be like, to have a section on Steam or something like that that is... Oh, RPGs. If you want to start with a simple RPG, then play this. If you want to learn how to play RPGs, play this, right? And then work your way up. So, and then also, it would also just be really good for story. Like, if they had two sections, like one section being mechanics and the other section being story. Like, do I need to play Witcher 2 before I play Witcher 3? Yes or no? Yes. I mean, no, no, not necessarily, but. Sorry. Sorry, I was answering the question. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nat was being Valve in that case. I was being Valve. Yeah, you don't yeah. you don't need to play so, it. I guess that segues quite perfectly into the game that we've all been playing, which yes. we have now said a dozen times is V Rising. We've all been playing V Rising together what? and we've I've been started multiple servers. I've been, um, yeah, I've been really looking forward to talking about it on the podcast because Eric and I've been t- talking a lot and I've really wanted Nat to I know. Play it. I know. I, I, so how, what is the best way to structure this? Oh, so let me, I mean, let me preface with what V Rising is <laughs> for the unbeknownst audience. So V Rising is a top down arena style <laughs> engagement mechanic, something like League of Legends or Dota, except you play it in an RPG similar to Diablo or Diablo 2 or something mm-hmm. like that where you have a bunch of bosses that you kill and that unlocks different things time out. in the world. Time out. Now there's a time out. You because Eric introduced this game very much from his perspective which I respect and understand, but I would never have introduced the game like that because we have vastly different perspectives on the game so but i introduced it with the way that you interact with it i would never ever describe it as an arena same and that's what got me you said that and i was like i i know eric said this because he's really focused on the pvp aspect but for me this has nothing to do with the pvp this if you look at this game this game is no 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 no. diablo 2 but if you if you look at this game and you were to compare it with the market and what most people have played, there are three games that play similarly to this that are dominant in the market. Dota, League of Legends, and Diablo 2. Or Diablo-esque games, right? I agree. Right. I disagree. Because Dota and League of Legends are basically the same, so you can put that as one. Then yes, Diablo 2. So those two are good. So you got but two the then. third one is a survival crafting game. And general. that was what I was getting to. But here's the thing. Your main interaction with the game and how you play it in how you interact but, with the well, controls of the game. No, no, not, uh, not, chill. What chill. do you spend chill. most of your time doing? No, what Eric spends fighting? most of his time doing. What I spend most no, no, of no, my no, time doing is very to- different. Even if you were to sit and build tediously, it's not tedious. It the, is the best the crafting main... ever. Hey, it is how about the best that? How build about this, system guys? ever? How about how about you guys both have very defined thought processes, and I'm going to be your medium. I'm going to be the middle okay. between the two. Go for it. Now. I have Go a feeling it, my yes. description fits both of yours. Okay, this is a skill based. It? Thank you <laughs> for sure. This is a skill based mm, action adventure simulator with elements of PvP and base building. It okay. is, and you are. RPG. A, uh, I think another well, RPG we're missing here. Uh, RPGs RPG, unfortunately RPG don't RPG include a, base a, building. A, RPGs can though. They I'm can, saying, but wait, like R- an RPGs it's don't. So the, like, rare that it's not. It doesn't. It's I don't think that's that rare, yes, right? It is like World even of even have base building. Wait, 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 wait. It did. It no, did. It did not. That was a. That was, was a. That was a. It's, dude. No, that no, no, was no, no, a phone game. 
Or that was it. That was right? a no. mobile game. No, 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 no. no. They had it even still, before then. You did have a base. They had it you even before then. Even in classic, oh they had this idea Guys, I need of an you RPG understand. and I having you, some of these mechanics. I need you to understand okay. that when you build a base and it looks like everyone else's base and it's in the exact same spot everyone else's base, <laughs> that is a mobile game. That is not a fucking base that you get to customize. It's not your house. Okay. It's not your guild. I'm not uh, even I, talking about that one not even talking about that one they had it before then but even if we don't consider a world of warcraft as an example they had this as back as the first elder scrolls games back in the 80s and early 90s multiplayer rpgs rpgs do not have to be multiplayer all i'm getting at is that the majority of rpgs do not have housing where you get to customize your own house. But, but well, that is, is it, what I'm saying. A lot of account? RPGs, a majority of RPGs do no, have some do sort not. of majority base type of deal. You have... Then why is it so rare? Are, uh, it's not... It's Baldur's it's Gate. Rare. RP, uh, like the original Elder Scrolls, we had things like... Um, not dust. What is it called? The, the Wasteland. We had the original Fallouts. All of these really top RPGs that defined the genre from the 80s and 90s had this idea okay, of a so home base that you either improve the skills of or no, no. It, add some sort okay, of design in games, layer did to you them. custom build your place anywhere in the world that you wanted with your using a set of different pieces to put together like in Valheim in any perf in your perfectly custom way that you want or was it I a think that's overly thing? No, I'm telling you, I mean, these you're are not very right. different you mechanics. Couldn't. They're very they're different not. mechanics. They're not. You could put that base. No, no, no. That base could be an instance. It could be a base that doesn't exist in the world that would still function the same. Having, you could still do that type of thing. Having a base of operations is not the same thing as fully custom base building. Agreed. They are not entirely the same, but they function the same. Not, other than one, the customization. One is, a, one is a home and a point of self-expression. The other one is just a game mechanic that everyone interacts with in the same way. I would argue that V Rising has both of those in one feature, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. are both it's, separate. It's both in one feature. There but is an I'm artistic that, nature like, that is not a functional part of the game. It's it's like saying that a book and a movie are the same. When one is like a far smaller representation of the thing. Like it is a far more simplified version of what we are talking about. Yes, a base is a base. Sure. A dock is a base. You ship out of the dock over and over again. In Sea of Thieves, you have a base. There's six of them. And you spawn in at one of those bases and you ship out. Like technically, but you have yeah. your ship. You have your actual ship in Sea of Thieves. Well, but All you I'm don't getting get to at customize is that it. you do to some degree. At to which degree does it become not a form of self-expression, bros? Bros, then just like, add a third tag to it. It's a skill place game that has RPG tendencies and base building f functionality. Period. Are we good? Thank you. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's fair. Cool. There, it is a three-way game. There is PvP available. There is also a PvP feature. It you can play it solo with your own private server, or you could play it on a server that's populated by other people. We are currently playing on a PvP server with other people, and the option of making the PVE feature of the game harder and more interesting with. Uh, added mechanics that did not exist in the base version of the game it is a very satisfying game yes. there is a lot of 100 there's a lot of satisfaction to get from building yourself from one point to the next to the next the skill ceiling is as high as you want it to be oh 100 you, you will run into a, a wall though for sure, I, you will hit a boss, or you will hit a area of the, of the of the map that just absolutely dumpster trucks you. And, and if that like, doesn't what happen, am I doing wrong? you can join the server we're on, and they will customize the battle arenas with all the bosses and make it even harder. Huh? Huh? I'm talking about like actual like because there's also like areas in the in the 
in the game where it's just like like you can't go there and assume that you can just sprint through like you can get on you can get a horse in this game and it can go as fast as you want or as, as slow as you want whatever but usually all it takes is a little creative dodging to get around right there are certain parts of the map where there is no amount of dodging that's going to stop you from possibly getting absolutely either fried by the sun or shot or in the face <laughs> in body. Yeah. So should we talk so, about the sun? Because, I guess we're uh, well, let me, before we talk about any specifics, Speaking I would of- love to put my color on my general thoughts. Cause I think it'll breed a lot of these small conversations anyways. This game is so frustratingly close to a perfect game. Yeah, for sure. And the things that it doesn't do perfect, my biggest concern is that it will, the things that it doesn't do perfect are the things that are going to be its downfall from a player base perspective. Yeah. And that worries me. It's a fair worry. Is that it? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I would say that's the thing. But like, this oh, is I just knew I wasn't I was supposed like, to say easily. anything. Yeah, yeah, no, this is just like this is so close. So for just to kind of didn't know if he had more to all say. the Stunlock games. Well, now <laughs> no, I, I, hear I, I hear you. I hear so, you. So Stunlock, the 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 studio that does this, Stunlock Games, has done some of my favorite games. Uh, back in the day, I played games like this, like the the original Battle Right, uh, Bloodline Champions. Um, there was a spinoff by a different company called Smash Muck Champions. Those styles of games are some of my favorite games of all time. I have played thousands of hours in many of them. And every single time I have watched the games and the developers who have made this game, who have all been from pretty much the same studios. These are all the same people, essentially. They've made all of these games. Mm-hmm. Every single time they make amazing 1.0 releases and they make gold and some of my favorite games ever to play. And then I watch every single one drive itself off of a cliff with just a few choices. And so I am hesitant because V rising has done the same thing on this 1.0 release and is beautiful. And this nice shiny gold idol of a game. Mm hmm. And I see cracks where if they don't do anything, it is going to fall off very, very quickly. And that's someone, my concern. Someone, someone would argue that's that my it's concern. already falling off. So, my turn. And I love the game. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, My Eric. turn to Andrew. not get interrupted. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, for me, from my perspective, the game is builder slash crafting first before any of the other mechanics that is the most important most perfectly executed part of the game they've done a thing that like is just now a standard that all other games like this need to do which is oh hey you have a different type of chest for each major you know herbs or materials for building or alchemy Mm -hmm. And everything goes in there perfectly. Some people argue, when we can talk about this later, about being able to pull from your your thing, being able to pull from your uh, chest automatically while you're at a crafting station. They're like, oh, why doesn't it have that? Like, come on, if it just had that. I basically think that that is to encourage the builder part, the self-expression part, the making your base a thing part that some people completely ignore and don't give a shit about. And it's fine that they don't give a shit about that because it's still a good game for them, surprisingly. Then Diablo 2-esque comes second to, for me. Like, and it only, be, I mean, because RPG, but because it's got that replayability like Diablo 2. I just, I've literally started like five or six uh, servers now. And, you know, most of them are gone, but like, because of the replayability of this game is just top notch. And that's where the Diablo 2 part comes in. It's just like Diablo 2 has always been the most replayable game I've ever played. Um, And then the last thing is that in the incredible combat mechanics come third. And it's because the combat mechanics are 
really, really good. But the combat mechanics are kind of like someone figuring out how to drive a car. Uh, and so I think maybe Day9 talks about it this way, where he's like, this has been the best way to do these types of games for a very long time. And people venture away from it. They try all these different things. And it's just like, this is the way to do it. You know, th this is a good feeling for playing a game like this. And so overall, to me, I think it's a perfect game. Legit. It is perfect. Because they've delivered everything you could want. They've delivered single player, PvE online with dedicated servers, host your own server, PvP servers online. You can also um, customize these servers, no matter where they are. And you can fix the problems that you have with the game. If you think certain things are too slow, if you don't like the day-night cycle length, you can turn it basically to zero. You can reduce the damage of the, the daylight and stuff like that. And so they've implemented a game that I believe is building and crafting first, because if it wasn't, I think they wouldn't have given us all these options. And they would have implemented certain things that we'll talk about, like sharding and having low security, no security, high security, medium security sections to live in and have your base have varying degrees of, you know, being destroyed. And now all I can think about is, Eric, were you able to hear any of that? Because you are chugging. You're like pixelated. <laughs> For a second, I was like, oh, did we lose him? I heard everything. Yeah, I'll stop there. That's my spiel. Okay. Now that the technical issues are done <laughs> and the snack getting is done, mm -hmm. the, um, yeah, I, I think one important way to think about it too is that the PV, the actual interaction with the characters and how you move and all of that system has been set in stone, designed, and done since they first released Bloodline Champions, right? They have not changed their gameplay since Bloodline Champions. It is the exact same interaction as V-Rising. And I could see how someone could pick up V-Rising and say all the base building stuff is what they focused on because that's literally that and the world and interaction with the world are what they developed for this game and has spent all their time doing the actual movement and mechanics that you interact with have been around now for what over 10 15 years 14 13 I years five to ten i was gonna say five to ten but i think bloodline I champions released in 2010 or uh, let me look it up so, I mean, it's just really cool because what they've done is kind of perfected slash mastered what you're talking about, the mechanics of combat and moving and interacting with the yeah. game. And they just do such a great job of doing that, right? And then they focused on other stuff. They take their first shot at the survival crafting stuff. And to me, they have literally set the bar on their Nailed first it. try. For sure. Everybody needs to do this. Like, I have been looking forward to Valheim 1.0 for a very long time. I'm going to be severely disappointed if they don't do certain things that, like, surprisingly, I think you guys and my wife didn't even notice this because I, I and I, I saw my wife specifically doing it. When you're, when you're base building, when you're architecting, you can replace many things w without deconstructing them. So you have a wall made of wood. You can replace it with a castle wall and you immediately get the, the stuff pulled back. Like that is such a nice to have feature that I guess I could say they, they haven't perfectly implemented the game because they do it with that. But I, I did find as I've gotten deeper into the full customization aspect where Ash and I have a PVE server and we're decorating it like crazy... I was trying to determine, do I want red carpet or blue carpet? And I couldn't replace the red carpet with blue carpet like you can replace a wood wall with a castle wall. I actually had to deconstruct those. So 
yes, they are very close to perfecting things. And if they would, you know, go above and beyond to make that occur for like everything, you know, even like, oh, maybe I want to place something here because they have a good movement. Like you can move anything. I want to move it here. Oh, but one thing is in the way. Okay, pick it up for me. Let me move that type of thing. Could be nice. Yeah, I I think my only concern is that this company is, in my opinion, from what I've seen, and I'm hoping I'm wrong. This isn't me hoping I'm wrong because I see the potential. V Rising has so many perfect or near perfect elements to it. But some of their design de- intent or design decisions are purely based around a very specific PvP place play loop. And I agree. they have put so much time and effort into that as you go further into the game. What design decisions? So things like how the sieges work, how the shards work on PvP servers, how the resources are split out once you start getting into silver light, how the silver mine and these little hotspots work, along with how the grind for schematics work once you move further into the game. These things have a place in which they occur and they purposefully designed this world at the size it is so that once you get to a certain point, you are grinding for very specific things to essentially fight in a limited time span for these shards in a PvP way because that is the ultimate goal of the game. Like if you play the game long enough, your goal is to collect all three shards, right? Or all of the shards on the server and to beat the final boss. Once you get to that goal, the design intent of the game, once you get to that last half, is a war to get those on a PvP server or on a PvP PvE server, you get them, And then that's kind of it. You have all of your optimizations unlocked. The only thing you can do in the game after that point is kind of customize your castle, which is entirely wonderful. I love all the base building aspects of it. I don't want to diminish their value at all because if you like that type of thing, I agree with Anthony wholeheartedly. It's some of the best in the industry right now. And every it it should be the standard. Please name a better one. It is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) I I I just mean that like... It should be the standard, and I wholeheartedly agree with all that. But I do think that the only reason it's good is because they were able to put time into it because they had already mastered 90% of the interaction over the course of four other games that they did. And so they were able to just put a ton of time into the cool stuff which I agree makes this awesome, but every single time they release a game, Smash Muck has essentially abandoned it. They release it and abandon it for something else. Release it and abandon it and release it and abandon it. I don't know if they necessarily abandoned it because think about what they released. It was really good, but it was direct competitor to League of Legends, which like, what are you going to do, right? It came out around the same time, yeah. Well... It, on one hand, yes, but there wasn't even a proof of effort for a lot of these games. Bloodline Champions, for example, was just dropped immediately, True. right? And it, it, it's one of those well, where V Rising is, it, it, you shouldn't take this as a corollary. I'm not saying that their actions are speaking that they are going to do that with V Rising. And I'm not even saying that is an issue yet. But it is my biggest worry because their past actions indicate that. And because V Rising is so, so good and they keep making these great things and then dropping them, I don't want them to drop this. Time out. Two things. One, V Rising has already, uh, the last I checked, it has done like 35% better 
than their last game. And it has been out technically for like a month. But yeah, there's the early access. Now, aside from that, you we're doing speculation here. So my speculation is different from yours. My speculation is they came out with those games and they realized we can't compete this way. We have made really good combat. We have made really good PvP. We are able to compete with League of Legends. We might be objectively better than them, but we can't just unseat them by pulling their players in. This is not going to happen. So let's completely pivot to this very popular genre that is on the rise, and that is survival crafting base building games. And let us go and do that better than anybody has ever done it. And let's gain a massive following of people that actually like us so that we can potentially unseat League of Legends with our next incredible game or with a variation of V Rising where it's like, here's V Rising Arena, you know, something like that. That would make a lot of sense to me Wait, that wants to if talk. they didn't do... Uh, <laughs> But I would say that would make sense to me if they didn't do three other games in between that were just trying to repeat the same stuff that they had did previously. They did three. They they, well, they kept they failing. Changed. They did change. That's fair. They did come up with V Rising. Okay. Hey, look, My I'm all for it. V Rising is amazing. Because I agree. With there are very clear signs that this game stops at a certain point. There are very clear like. After the last boss that you fight in the game, for me, I'm always I always focus on PVE. I, I don't care about the PvP aspect. I, when I played Destiny, I didn't care about whether or not I could kill the person across from me in in half a second or not. I wanted to see whether or not I could get to the raid and, and know the mechanics like by heart, right? So whenever you show me a game that's like, hey, here is the complete tier of people that you can hunt in this game it goes all the way up to a certain person and then it stops and there is no illusion to like another map or an ex or a piece of the map that you just can't even touch right now like there's nothing to tell me that the people who have made this game have held any cards back They've played everything that they have developed. They don't have anything that's working right now. So that, and I will say that isn't entirely true. So they did a developer release early last year with a three-step plan. Each of these steps being roughly the same size. Okay. So the first step was Gloomrot. Right? Okay. Gloomrot was their first step. That was their last big release of early access. Okay. The second step was a 1.0 release, okay. and they do have a third step that should be roughly equal to the size of both of those updates coming sometime in the future. Combined. Diablo 2 no, no, expansion. No, 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 no. Equal, <laughs> equal to, right. maybe. Right? Equal I'm telling to you, dude. Size. They, have, they, have, they have done Diablo 2. Like, one of the ways I see they've done Diablo 2 is, like, there's PvP in Diablo 2, right? But... Mm. It was lackluster and kind of in gamey, and everyone enjoyed the process of going from zero to hero. The process, yeah, but this entire game was designed around PvP. No, 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 that no. Was their goal I from disagree. The start. I think Act One. No, 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 no. no. This listen, is from the developers. Listen for a this second. isn't from a, listen like, for a an second. opinion based thing. Listen for a second. No, no, no. I'm just saying. Go into this argument with the intent that the developers have stated their intent for this game to be PvP. No, no. Show me this. Show me the article, and then I will assume that. But okay. I, no, no. Listen, because you didn't even give me a chance. He's listening. Go for it. Go for it. Act one, PvP optional. You don't need it. It can be very fun, and if everyone starts off on day one, right? But they've done a really good thing that people have already been implementing, where it's like you have uh, gates. So that people that have a full-time job can play together incrementally. So act one, day one. People try to rush to get the right place, whatever. That's pretty much mm -hmm. it. Who can get the good base in act one? Act two, day two, right? Now you're racing into there, trying to see if anyone can get a good base in there too as their like second base or maybe relocation, whatever. 
but still, you're mostly doing PvE right now, just like Diablo 2. You're trying to go from zero to hero for Act 1 and Act 2. Now, finally, you're starting to get to Act 3. At, you know, Act 3 kind of starts at the end of Act 2, whatever. But like, you're now going to doing rifts and stuff like that. And that's where the PvP really starts to begin because now you can compete for a resource that is in very important thanks to the rifts. And from Act 3 and on, that's when the PvP really gets going. And they've done an amazing job of allowing us to timegate things. Now, on their official servers, they didn't timegate because, of course, everyone would flip their shit and be like, you fucking timegated me? Are you crazy? It's like, well, actually, this game is a marathon, not a sprint. If you're in high school, sure, it's a very long sprint. <laughs> but like, if you have two hours to play a day because you've got a job and kids, you want to find a server that does that, where it's like two hours a night, we're time gated to this. Oh, it's a reasonable accomplishment for what someone can do in two hours. Or so, it's not time, it's time plus, I guess, achievement gating. Does that make sense? Like they unlock certain bosses and stuff. So I don't exactly agree. Oh yeah? But I can see where you're going. Well, before, before you go into that, Nat, let me just preface this with two things. So they have a number of interviews on their blog. And you can start from number one and go through all of them. A bunch of them, almost every single one of them, talks a lot about a bunch of different things. They did not introduce PvE servers until after the Gloomrot expansion because they never even wanted to have PvE servers only. The game was intentionally designed around the idea of only having PvP servers and that was their intent for 90% of the development. Now, again, all of the things that you're saying are great things about the game. All I'm getting at is their design intent from the get-go was this idea of progressing through this world with the constant risk of PvP and the castle design was specifically implemented so that you could fight over territory and have territory control. And that oh, was their goal. Well, we might as well... Now, of course, maybe... Sorry, I, I haven't read what you've read, so I don't know for sure. But may, maybe... What is the word when someone is... Wait, Nat, did you have something you wanted to say? Hmm. Sorry. <laughs> because I realized that Eric was like before Nat says this I would so uh, the only thing I was saying is that with a game that has this kind of focus um it's very hard for me to see a the longevity of it for people who play it for PvE and I understand that the game was geared to play as PvP there has to be a progression for me of like how those skills can be utilized with different skills and or different ways of manifesting those skills else it's boring if i'm if i'm blocking attacks with the same word of the damned for three months at a time i'm done i'm over it it's the reason why i don't play and it's uh it's a big reason why i don't follow pvp just in general because i feel like it Ages why did a game prematurely? Why did you replay Diablo two so much? Me, I never replayed Diablo two. Bro, we played Diablo two. Re we re we. You are hallucinating. No, 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 I, Nat, 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 Anthony. Me played and you played, played it a lot. Nat did not play Diablo two as much as we did, did repeatedly. Not play Diablo two with y'all. Really, I played Diablo three with yeah. you guys. Oh man. Yeah. yeah, and he only played Diablo three, and the reason that one works so well is because of the Greater Rift system. And even after that, I was like, "No, this is boring," because it's the same thing every single time. Interesting. Yeah. So it's I had a friend of mine reach out recently, um, Jason. He was like, "Hey, are you going to check out the new Diablo updates? They've actually done a lot of great like For Diablo four, Diablo four. And I was like. No, 
I mean, that sounds cool, but I mean, at the same time, it's the same. Like, have you completely changed how this game works? Because from what I saw from the time that I played it, I'm not I'm not getting what I need from this game, period. Like, I think it's really hard for me to buy into a multiplayer game right now that does not have a very rich PVE aspect to it, like V like V Rising does. Which is great for V Rising for the next month. But I'm gonna guarantee you if we ever do get to the last two fights of this game and we finish this. I probably won't touch it again because unless unless they're like, hey, what the grand reveal is that they have a completely another map and they have another storyline for you to chase down. And there's other skills that are leveraged into the game, then uh, then I'm all for it. Dude, but I'm, you got to keep me you got to keep me interested. I don't I, know if I, they've I, given us anything for the next expansion, but I think they need to do what I've been theory crafting, which is like. So just the other day, Eric got offline, Nat and I are still playing, and our neighbor is renovating his house. And so I walked in and I stole a bunch of shit. <laughs> You're a terrible person. <laughs> and that is a great <laughs> thing. Like, being able to thief is just a hilarious and fun mechanic. That's why Sea of Thieves still exists somehow, you know? But So what you're thinking, like a thief system where like you go stealthy, but like you actually take more damage? That That would be nice. But overall... My theory has been that they either didn't have time to implement this or they were unaware that this is a good idea. They need low security, no security, medium security, full security servers where they shard the servers together so that there are certain things like when you go into a rift, everyone can have actual interaction. And then when you're, if you build a base in act one, in the forest it is never ever going to be touched you can build it in any plot you want mm -hmm. you, you no one can steal from you no one can take it from you if you build one in act two well now people can steal from you or something like that if you build one in act three plus now people might be able to completely take your castle permanently you know like varying levels of that sort of thing Risk. Too. And with the sharding, now you can implement it to where you don't need a raid window anymore. If someone goes to raid a place, well, who's online that has a castle there? <laughs> Spawn them in, you know, <laughs> like, that sort of thing. Now, I know that the sharding, or sorry, not sharding, the shards <laughs> and final boss system might make that impossible. I'm not sure because I haven't gotten that far and I try not to spoil things for myself. I just know that that's a thing. Mm -hmm. But that's like, why why wouldn't they have done that? Is it because it's technically very difficult? Or is it because another reason? Like, Yeah, I, th I think it's twofold. I, I agree wholeheartedly, though. Uh, some way to culminate the entirety of your player base together rather than keeping them siloed out and being able to add more interaction points and things like what you're talking about sharding do that is in my opinion also the the only viable solution to make it not just keep losing players oh yeah and and even with the sharding thing you can flag for pvp and whatnot you know people can yeah. still play pve but you don't get as much loot you know, 100% or have a wild section or make it so that certain things that you have to get like 100% and, and like it's one of those things where you have as it's designed today, you have people fall into three camps and right now they are siloed and alone mm -hmm. and each one of them has a different breaking point of when they fall off of the yep. game. Rather than if they were just put together some way, the interaction of each of the groups would make the game more interesting with all of the stuff that it already has. And while that might not make it last forever, that solves a lot of the issues where you have people who are just playing PvE and single player who never are in a world with another player. And the minute they beat the game, they're done. 
mm-hmm. they they leave. Well, see, I think right. So to me, it's surprising that you like Matt feels that way because to me, it's completely different. If I beat the game this time around in like my PVE server with Ash, I will probably have beat it mostly as a Zenitsu clone, where I'm going all lightning, trying to go fast and whatnot. And the next time that I play, when the servers reset, I want to build a castle somewhere else in a different location. And I want to use a completely different build this time. And who knows what the progression is going to be like, because there's so much variety available. I mean, the only game I've gotten that from is Hades. Yeah. And and like, you're not wrong, but I also think that you are in a minority of the player base who has the capability. And here's the thing. I don't want, a minority of the player base being the people that stay on to interact with the game because this game shines with interaction. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of people to go ahead and actually have this game feel alive. Not a lot of people. And here's the problem that so many games run into. You don't need a lot of people for interaction. You just can't keep them on separate servers that has a limit of less than a hundred right? That all die off. And at some point over the course of five to 10 days, you lose the entire play race for a server, right? Mm. That's the biggest problem is that you have siloed people out to be alone after a certain point in time in each of these servers. And while there are good mechanics in the game, a hundred percent, I agree. Things that shine on their own with no interaction needed base building, boss hunting, the just acting on the abilities and bu- doing different builds. All of that is super fun. But the thing that makes the game special is being able to do all those things while interacting. And this game facilitates those things individually, but not it's your unlocked. entire player base being able to interact more. Mm-hmm. And so... It's it's a gem of a game and it's so close. And I I I agree with Anthony. It's something like sharding or some way to keep these servers interacting with each other and players interacting with each other. You don't need tens and billions of players. I have played EverQuest servers that felt alive with less than a thousand people on them. Mm. So twenty thousand people, which is what the current player base is is more than enough. But right now they're siloed away from each other arbitrarily almost. I don't know, guys. I'm going to need a little bit more than just some 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 sharding of the servers and some more people because I don't know if you've noticed. Oh yeah, I'm not I could I could uh, give two poops if I talk to more than look, two more people in my life at this point. And I can I can understand that. And and I concede that I think there are other things where they can improve. Mm-hmm. But I could see them working on an expansion and getting people like you back with more bosses, more For dungeons, sure. more sure. areas. Right? They have it perfected all of that. It's so easy to add more areas. It's so easy to add more bosses. It's so easy to add more castle decorations, more building mechanics, updating those. All of those are fixable. It's a 9 out of 10 game now. If they add more of them, it'll be a 9 out of 10 game then. It would also fix all the server issues if every castle was, you know, not fully loaded in unless you're actually interacting with it. 100%. You know what they can't fix, though? Unless they start right now, the day night cycle. Inter- well, <laughs> I'm just messing with you. <laughs> yeah. But but the but the interaction with the servers, they can't fix the way they've designed the servers unless they really turn down on it. Yeah. And I feel like that's the biggest issue too. Like I complain about things like the day night cycle, which is why he's giving me <laughs> shit. But um, it's so stupid. I, I love look, the day night cycle. He loves it. Look, stupid. Either way, it's essential. It doesn't detch. Theme. It's not anyway. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, it doesn't take away from the game experience. Really, it's kind of fun. It's uh, it's there are things you could say about it. You could argue it one way or the other, but it isn't the problem. It isn't a problem. I don't mark it as a negative in my negative box for this game. There's only one negative. 
why do we have a hundred different servers that are all online running with zero out of 50 people? And if you go to a server 10 days after creation, there's zero people on it. And I have to start over arbitrarily instead of just sharding and making a more interesting server meshing type of deal and actually putting the work foot forward there so that people can interact with each other. But all that said, <laughs> I'm addicted to the game. I, I love it. And I just hate, I hate seeing negatives for it only because I want it to do so well. I mean, because I do enjoy it. I do enjoy playing it. And the negatives don't particularly affect me. I should be clear about that. I am going to play it regardless. I just hate to see a good people game, yeah. leaving the game. Yeah. Well, think about it this way. Because of those issues. I would argue that we are... What's the word? I mean, they are only a... Their company is like 45 people. They have 45 people yeah. working for the company. That's not all developers. That's 100%, the whole yeah. company, right? These are hard and problems. It is not easy to make sharding. And yeah. if you think about it, when you want to develop a game with sharding, it would take less time in a way if you did that first, but then no one can work on anything else. 100%. Because you can't make all of the amazing stuff because you're going to have to go and undo it. And that's like what's happening when like Star Citizen right now. They know that they needed to sh give something to the people that are giving them an insane amount of money. So they did. Yeah. And now they have to make all of that work with sharding, basically. Yeah. And it's not no, sharding easy. Sharding is difficult. It wouldn't have been the, the solution I chose. If I were designing V Rising, I would have done it old school style, 100%, where you had large servers instanced housing, and you could essentially choose to siege a castle at a plot but it would be like a selection and then the instance would be you sieging. Oh yeah. Castle. And dude, how awesome would it be to have like matchmaking for that? So exactly. everybody exactly. can beat the game, no matter your skill level. Yeah. And if you want to go yeah. and get a shard from somebody, you're going to have to fight someone just as good as you. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And that's a hundred percent how I would have done it because then you don't have to worry about any of the server meshing. You have a server that you're on and it has 4,000 people on it, and maybe it'll die out one day, but all servers do, but it lasts years, right? And mm -hmm. each plot can have a, some number of people. You make it a percentage based of the total population of the server. So like you might not get the most popular spot, but you'll get like this fourth or fifth most popular spot on the map, right? And the more people there are on the server, the more you open up those. And then if you want to siege a place, you go up to a castle and where it has the knock knock, there's like a little transparent door. You click on it and you can see all the people that own that castle, just like in something like Black Desert Online for housing. And then, like Anthony said, you can do matchmaking and siege a place. And when you go into siege a place, you go into an instanced area of the map that kind of surrounds that castle. It's totally separate from the server map. So you only have to deal with that castle in the 20 people or the with like the server performance people. Yeah. And then people can experience fun sieges. They can experience that cool PVP aspect. They can experience the shards. But guess what? When you're out in the world, you'll see hundreds of people at all times doing all kinds of stuff, doing bosses, fighting in open world PVP, flagging for PVP, PVE, etc. Right? And you have all those cool interactions on a never dying server and you don't have to worry about any of the technical issues of server meshing or server sharding. But that's how I would have done it. They did not do it that way. They can't do it that way now, but I, I do. Mean, I, I love how they built the world though, because to me it just shows how future MMOs could be built. Like agreed. Agreed. There are again, love the game as it is i just see the player base declining and i'm like ah couldn't you have done it this way but it, what if they like one of my speculations is that they developed it the way they did because of streamers so like if i was a big streamer right now i would totally be hosting 
like community server events right now. Like that would be my thing until I'm bored where we're going to have and we're going to play with all these different settings and have siege windows, whatever you want to do. But like, that's a neat part of it that they gave to the community. I would love that. I don't see anybody doing it though. That's the only problem. Yeah, I'm surprised that no one's doing it. Like I I think the game is yeah. so good that why is no one doing that? Cuz the hype yeah. is already over, guys. I will say the marketing and release strategy of 1.0 was abysmal. They had more people playing it in early access release you, than the, they the, ever did at 1.0 release. Yeah. So the 1.0 release had a lower cap and a quicker drop drop off than early access. Yeah, I mean, it could be one of those things where like there's certain streamers that I know will just be like, we are going to play V Rising in three months because their schedule is so booked. And they are like, I know how big this game is. I need to block several weeks to play this game. And I can't do that right now because of all the sponsorships I have lined up Damn. and stuff like that. Nah, guys. No. Yeah. It's a wonderful game. Well, it's a wonderful yeah, game. Yeah, and we're just, we're probably just, gonna just, keep playing. Yeah, we're totally gonna keep playing playing. It's just it's unfortunate that I can definitely see the end of it already. Yeah. I cannot. Well <laughs> I I cannot he either, to be fair, but I like the PvP. That's cute. So the it's PvP is infinitely the fun. the crazy thing, and I guess now I didn't realize you hadn't experienced this, is that to me Diablo 2 has a replayability factor that has never been matched. And this is the first game that has matched that. Huh? I don't know. Maybe like, maybe uh, gaming isn't. Maybe I haven't run into a video game that's really like brought me back to being a kid again. But like there isn't a game that hasn't made me go back and play it like. Multiple times other than Kingdom Hearts. <coughs> who... Hades. <coughs> Hades. Uh, and Hades. I mean, obviously Hades. I already mentioned it, but like. I'm Hades saying, like, is your Diablo. Hades I mean, just, to, my, be, just like, to be fair. I could play Hades nine yeah. times out of 10, 365 days, 24 seven, whatever you could like, you could put me in front of either one or two and I'd be stoked because every single run is different. And the power, the, the power fantasy fantasy is there. Story is kind of there, like near the end of it, but it's not really about the story. It's about like, what are you what are you doing to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible? I don't know. So all that to say, uh, I love this game. It's really fun. It's just unfortunate that I don't feel attached to the PvP like I would to like a game that I have played before that like I was like, oh, the PvP isn't bad. Yeah. I really think it's that destiny. I really it's think destiny. that the it's only destiny. way the <laughs> PvP works right now is with a time gate that works with your own very personal schedule. And there's just not enough servers doing that. Like they released a whole bunch of servers that do the exact same thing. If they would have instead had some servers dedicated to like two hour time slots of when people are home and like, I don't know, it's just. There's ways to do it. They just they needed to do research to go ahead and figure out how they were going to do it, and they didn't. Or or if they were, if they have done it, they're just working on it. I mean, it it's all it's almost it like a game. It's almost like a game where it would be great for some people to do a once a week, two to four hours a night for that one day a week, D and D session style thing. And there's mm. sixty people doing that, D &D or 120 people. Hmm. <laughs> Ain't no, D ain't no D and D session going for just two hours. Yeah, but I'm talking about during the week. Yeah, <laughs> after work, okay. you got know, kids, you got dogs, you got wives, you got husbands. I know, I know, <laughs> I, know I know. Got okay, the man. Well, okay then. Well, I guess. Uh, well, I guess with that said, on a somber note. Yeah, <laughs> for you guys, all, I'm excited. Really... I think that V Rising's taken off, and that if V Rising doesn't take off, their next game's taken off. And if their games don't take off, the next people that iterate on these mechanics and these design decisions is going to take off. All in all, this has been a great, amazing accomplishment for the gaming industry as a whole, and it's only going up. Like, 
I am very positive about it. You guys can be sad if you want, but it's going to be great. I mean, I'm going to keep playing it. I love it. So Also, Men's Mental Health Awareness Month, it's okay to be sad. You got to be sad sometimes. Yeah. You gotta yeah, embrace that. You gotta shit. give a nice cry. Yes, eat some ice gotta cream. Give a nice cry. <laughs> That's what you do oh, when you're man. sad, right? You eat ice cream. What's happening? Yeah, yeah, I'm in for that. Okay, guys. <laughs> okay. Well, next week, I think we have a fun. Uh, what are we? Drinking? Texas style whiskey to try. Which, oh, well, we'll see you next week. Mm, yes. From Barbecue. The woods. Yeah. Well, uh, but with that said, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.